Greetings, old school magic players, and welcome to the Four Horsemen. Greetings, old school magic players. Welcome to the Four Horsemen old school magic Twitch stream. I'm the Chadster. Be your host for today's events. We are playing Four Horsemen Popper Singleton tonight. We have uh, some interesting matches scheduled for you. And uh, our players are going to be joining here shortly. So in the meantime, uh, I'm going to cover the Four Horsemen Popper Singleton Tournament, give you just an overview. Uh, this is a tournament that uh, we ran this summer from August 4th through September 27th. Today, we're actually running over and uh, we're playing our quarterfinals match, one of our last quarterfinals matches tonight, along with um, one of our... Uh, semi-finals matches, which is ongoing right now. Um, my co-host and counterpart, John Eckleberry, is covering that. And I'll be covering the last quarterfinals match tonight. We'll give you an overview of the, the decks and the format here as we're getting started. Um, this tournament format is focused exclusively on the Old School Magic the Gathering 1993 and 94 expansion sets. Arabian Nights, Antiquities, Legends in the Dark. And for this particular event, we're doing what we call Popper Singleton, which is uh, specifically the common cards as well as the um, uh, singleton requirement, which means only one, um, only one card per deck. There's a deck list available at bit.ly slash four horsemen popper singleton. 60 card decks, no maximum, no sideboards. Uh, just a snapshot of the card list and the card pool available, 20, 255 common cards, um, including reprints and Magic Online reprints. Um, and it's a pretty extensive uh, set of cards, some really powerful stuff, even though it's commons, and a lot of cards that rarely or never see play, uh, you'll see play here. Uh, just a quick snapshot of some of the, the powerful blue common cards. Um, all of these are classic, very reminiscent uh, of a lot of our old school players' childhoods. Different uh, things like Flood and uh, Ghost Ship and Boomerang. Um, even the almighty Giant Tortoise, Unstable Mutation, and cool stuff like Sage of Latinam. All really powerful cards in this format. Um, a host of artifacts also extremely powerful from the Bone Flute, which um, really does a lot of work against attackers. Staff of Zegon, um, Taunus Wand, Jaloom Tome, and things like Flying Carpet, which has been eroded uh, to take away the, the second part of the card. It makes a creature flying, and the drawback's been removed in the, the reprinted errata. And of course, the ever classic Felware Stone, and stuff like the Ocean Soldier, Dragon Engine, Clay Statue, Brass Man, all really great stuff. The Almighty Red has an unbelievable array of power behind it. Everything from Chain Lightning, Pyrotechnics, Fisher, you name it, um, this format has it. And these cards in red dominate. Rook Egg, Fire Drake, Brothers of Fire, Bloodlust, the Almighty Mountain Walking Mountain Yeti, and the Desert Walking Desert Nomads. Bird Maiden actually does really well, and the Ever Classic Atog is super powerful. Green also has a ton of great cards at its dispense. All big creatures. The Almighty Moss Monster, very hard to get rid of. Dirkwood Boars, big, big guy. The Tree Folk, Argothian Tree Folk. Wailuli Wolf to pump things. Crumble to kill artifacts along with Scavenger Folk. And the Pradesh Gypsies also are super powerful. Really, really great green stuff. Um, and there's a few flyers as well. The Legends themselves are pretty cool as well. Um, and some, some great white cards that are very powerful. 
And um, you know we're going to see some of these legends and some of these decks as well. They're pricey, but they are strong, and some really great stuff. So um, we're going to get into the the match. Uh, this is the brackets as they stand today, and uh, looks like we've got Mike in the players window. So I'm going to let him in here. Hey, Mike, how you doing? You hear me? Hey, Mike. How's it going? Good. There we go. It's better. I can hear you now. All right. We're just waiting for Mark. I've already started the Twitch stream, and I was just giving kind of a, an intro and a preview. And uh, um, we are just waiting for Mark to join us. All right. No stress. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and continue with kind of the overview. I'm giving the brackets overview for the viewers. Um, we are in the quarterfinals. A couple of our players have finished their quarterfinals matches. Um, Luke beat John Eckleberry 2-0. Jeff uh, Cullowith also beat Daniel Carnari 2-0. And Luke and Jeff are actually playing their match right now for the semifinals. Um, Peter and Ben um, are 2-0. And so Peter's going to move to the semifinals. The winner of tonight's match that we're covering, um, either Mark or Mike, will proceed to semifinals as well to play Peter. Um, so we're just waiting for Mark to join, and we will get started. Okay, Mike, I just gave Mark a call. Uh, okay. He did not pick up, so um, why don't we do kind of a review of your deck while we're waiting for Mark to join? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, so let me jump to your deck picture, and I'll share it. Uh, we've got four-color aggro, which is Mark's deck. Uh, we'll cover that when, when he comes on. And, um, Mike, you're playing blue, red, black mid-range. Uh, one of the few players to play black in the format. I've got your deck picture up here. Feel free to walk us through it. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I don't I don't have the deck picture right in front of me, so I'm going to cheat and just look at it. I'll give you a little run through. So yeah. I built this uh, um, quickly to say that uh, I went through the cards with like two passes, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to put these together. I've got a decent knowledge of uh, the cards from this era, just from years of playing and cubes and enjoying them. Um, I put all my favorite cards in a pile and cut it down as close to 60 as I could get. Uh, I think it's 63 right now. I'd definitely make a few changes if I could, um, now that I've actually played some games. But unfortunately, I wasn't available early, early half of this, so it's been a quick montage for me, the second half of this tournament. Um, Black... I thought Ball Gimp would be good, but he just dies. I'd cut that card. Yeah. Um, probably just go down to 62. Uh, normal Red Sweet in here. The Yeti with the Mountain Walk's awesome. Uh, Ghost Ship, arguably the best blue creature. Yeah. Absolutely. Not, you know, that's a good argument. I think it is just the best blue creature. Pyrotechnics speaks for itself. Fissure speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. Um I would run more artifacts. There's two cards in this uh, pool that I think are underutilized from what I've seen, or maybe I'm just overestimating them, but um, they're both from Antiquities. The uh, Orcish Mechanics and the Soldevi Mage that you can sack an artifact, draw a card, or sack an artifact, deal two damage. Um, I think I, if I could do it again, I'd definitely build a lot more just junk artifacts. So again, cards like Bog Imp that I regret putting in the deck now, um, turn them into stuff like Brass Man so I can feed them to a machine later uh card another one that i missed i think was dragon engine uh luke sherry pointed that out to me and i'm like oh yeah smart 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dragon Engine can be really, really good, mainly late game when you got a ton of mana. Exactly. Yeah, that mana sync is it's awesome because, again, this format's so limited. Um, I think the only other mana sync, quote-unquote, would be uh, Fire Drake, and it really isn't. It's just a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. Yeah, um, he, he, he's kind of he's kind of disappointing, um, I found as well. Um, the Brothers of Fire also, I noticed... Um, are not included in your deck and those guys are super powerful yes i so i hovered over brothers of fire again hindsight's 2020 i saw the red mana and i'm like you know what i'm in two color or three colors if i was running two colors that'd be the first card i'd include in the deck in my haze of building those quickly though i'm like you know what too much red mana let's uh i don't remember what i put in for it but um hindsight's 2020 like i said i think that card does belong in my deck yeah um it can get a little pricey, and the double red, I mean, you run in three colors with the black, the blue, and the red, it, it can be difficult. Plus, you've got a lot of double um, red requirements already between you know Giant Strength and Mountain Yeti, as yes. well as the Drake, and um, I noticed no Fisher, right? Am I missing Fisher? Uh, Fisher's in here. Oh, where is but, it? Uh, another reason oh, now that I can go um, and, I guess... Uh, uh, break down my own thought process a little bit more. Uh, I got greedy in blue, mm. so I'm running Flood. I felt like Flood would have a lot better payoff long-term. Yes, um, late game, it's so, it's super killer. I mean, it's basically like a game-ender um, mm -hmm. if it's late game. But the double blue adds up. Uh, you know, it's it hard to tap does. more than two creatures. So my thought was run cards like Giant Strength over a card like Brothers of Fire where you pump all your extra mana into it. Have your extra mana be, if it's going to be a double color, we'll be tapping creatures down, make something get through. Um, that was a line of thinking for me, at least. There's actually one less mountain in here than the other two. Um, I think Fissure, the Yeti, uh, and the Drake might be the only cards with um, two red pips, aside from that giant strength that I was just talking about. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, Boomerang, I believe, is a card that's in here somewhere. Um also, two blue. So, what and can you not many players played black? Can you talk us through what was uh, what inspired you to play black amongst all the other choices? Um, <laughs> this and bark tooth. Oh, yeah, and uh, <laughs> the witches, I think, were a big one. Yeah, uh, walking dead seemed cute for a very limited format, and then most importantly, Obliet. Um, mm -hmm. access to Oblit seemed all right. Uh, the rest of the black cards in here, um, aside from just being a favorite, uh, Evil Eye of Orms by Gore actually won me a game. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really expect it to, but it's got big numbers for being a common. Uh, yeah, and I he's a 3 if it was a singleton format, this would be a good build around, but uh -huh. it, it hamstrings me. Um, well, he, the Evil Eye of Orms by Gore is a 3 6 as well, right? He's pretty big on his toughness. Yeah, he's very beefy. So. But you got to commit to it. It's not a card that you could take off the field. So say this somehow got neutralized or stopped or uh, I think Wall of Vapor completely stops this and would essentially mean I, I couldn't attack with anything. Mm. Um, the only card that can block this is Walls, but it's cute. I don't know if it's ever going to happen. One of my favorite cards as a kid growing up, if I can tell a little story, um, I guess I wasn't a kid. I was in college, but... It was right when uh, Legacy sort of broke away as its own format, and I was playing a aggro deck, and I had a buddy I was playtesting against that he forgot his deck, but he had a... Um, I was running a community at the time, and we had some cards for sale, and uh, he picked up a 6th edition tournament pack, and uh, Evil Eye of Orms by Gore, I believe it was 6th edition or 5th edition maybe, um, whichever one it was in, 5th edition probably, Um and I lost my legacy pile that I was so excited to be running in this new exciting format. It was no longer called Type 2. It was breaking away. And um, I lost to an Evil Eye of Orms by Gore. That's how bad my idea was. <laughs> I wish I remember what I had in my deck, but it stuck to me. And I'm like, wow, all right, I'm never going to forget this card. This was embarrassing. A bunch of people were watching. It was great. It, it was a fun memory. Yeah. <laughs> but definitely influenced me putting it into the deck. Uh it's also a cube all star. I've got a nice old school cube that we rotate all the bad cards in and out of. It does all right. 
Um, yeah. If I could do it again, I don't know if I'd cut black or I definitely would scale it back. Like I said, uh, stone throwing doubles, uh, bog imp, and uh, what's her name? Muscle. All are just pretty dead. Hmm. They died of a spread out pyrotechnics. They died of desert. They're they get beat up pretty easy. Yeah, they also died to the um, dreaded grape shot catapult. Yes. Well, the flyers. Uh, the the little swamp walker. I thought other people might be running swamps. So it would be cute to sneak it in there. But um, lo and behold, this is the first time I haven't run green in a tournament probably in my entire time playing with the four horsemen here. Yeah, so, green is so strong. Yeah, we were just um, earlier. I was toggling through all the powerful green cards. I mean, everything from Moss Monster to the Gypsies, the Boars, the Scavenger Folk. Wolverine Pack is actually super solid. Um, you know, the Wailuli Wolf. You've got the Arthurian Tree Folk. You've got Dragonfly, the Emerald Dragonfly. Um, Elves of Deep Shadow was the one that stuck out to me. Yeah, Elves of Deep Shadow. Yeah, that's the only mana ramp is them and the Felwar Stone. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Crumble. You've got things like I mean, the Argothian Pixies are not as powerful in green, but um, you've got some Forest Walker like the Cat Warriors. You've got the Hornet Cobra for First Striker, um, and then all the big beefy green creatures. I mean, the Moss Monster just like uh, Evil Eye himself, is. Yeah. He's, he's like almost impossible to kill unless you two for one with something like the pyrotechnics or whatever. Yes. Yeah. So green is in, in a lot of the decks. Um, we can take a look at Mark's deck. Uh, let me see if he is online yet. Uh, one second. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. Mark is still not picking up. So, uh, Mike, one of the uh, one of the folks in the chat asked if you could talk to us about the um, Tabernacle of Pendril Vale in your um, in your popper deck here. <laughs> oh, this guy here. Yeah. <laughs> the, is that the four four flying rook egg token? That's a yes, three three thousand dog card. It's a rook egg. Yeah. Um, so again, having played enough uh, cam and magic i feel like this is the place to break this out i'll yeah. be 100 percent honest with you um i never have tokens i've been playing magic for 20 something years and i just write ruck on whatever i got around me this tabernacle is not real um
little drawings and stuff at cards that I use, but when it comes to like actual cards and format, zombie tokens and legacy, I'm just like scribbling all over whatever I can reach usually. Listen, I know you have Fallen Empires tokens though. Oh, I got plenty of those. <laughs> I love it. Uh, oh, here, I might have one right here. Too bad we don't have citizens. Let me see what I got. Oh, they're in my bowl. I got a. There's a nice little spread. I'll give you a commercial. Boom. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, these are fun. I love them. They see a lot of play. They get a lot of compliments. So, yeah. Well, okay. So, it looks like Mark is not going to show. Oh, wait. He just turned green. No. Oh. I wish we could pull people in to whereby, like you can in teams. <laughs> you just like, oh my gosh, yeah, like you just suck them in, force them in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I am going to share your desktop here. Um, we still haven't covered Mark's deck. I guess we sh we can cover that real quick. So Mark did just zap a little message into our group here. Hold on, it says something. Uh, says he will be online in five minutes. Okay. All right. Well, we can cover his. Um, we can cover his deck then. Um, okay. So Mark is playing a four color aggro deck. Um, there were not a lot of decks in uh, in this tournament that ran you know more than three colors. Uh, this is this is one of the the few. Uh, decks that did run three colors, and let me make sure I'm sharing my right screen. There we go. Um, so Mark Griffiths is uh, one of the newer players to the Four Horsemen, and he is. Um, let's see, is this showing up? Yep, it is. Okay, he is doing pretty well actually, uh, considering he's one of the newer players, um, and he's come up with some creative builds. This is a green uh blue red white build and running running two colors can be tricky if you have double running three as we've seen is what most most folks did mark's running four colors and we even had folks running all five colors um but that creates so many mana problems um you know, mike did you get a chance to to look at the deck pictures that we've shared for for mark um, I actually have not. Okay. We've shared them in the group. Um, I'll be happy to, to shoot you a copy of it. We, you know, we've, we, we share all, everyone's, um, deck pictures just to make sure that, um, you know, everyone's kind of got a level playing field. All right. And, yeah. I wouldn't turn that down if you just toss that picture my way. I saw my own. I got tagged in it. Thank you. Yeah. I really peruse. Sure, man. Yeah. I, um. I, I tried to make sure to get everyone's deck pictures in this time. Uh, I think we're still missing Ben's, but he's the last one. So um, let's see. Mark Griffiths, four color aggro. All right. I just shot it over to you and, right. and I've got it up on the screen here. So we can kind of, we can kind of talk through his deck while we're waiting for him to join. Again, four colors, um, tricky and, uh, He's not running a lot of doubles, but he is running a few, mainly in red. And then a couple of legends in the Moss Monster. So he did do a pretty good job. Well, he's got the double blue on the, the ghost ship, the, and double red on Fisher, double red on Giant Strength. Doubles on the Legends and the Moss Monster. Double red on the Fire Drake and the Brothers. So actually, there is quite a bit of double red. What do you think of this build so far? I think the Flying Carpet is cool to see here. That's the card I thought about and didn't include, but throwing those giant Legends over the top could make a huge difference real fast. Um, Bloodlust is another one. Very tricky, good combo with uh, Pyrotechnics. You could kill pretty much anything. Mm-hmm. Um, Interesting to see that there's two white cards here. I, 
I guess uh, if he's not real deep anything uh, in any. Or I'm sorry, uh, the legends are white too. So okay, I take that back. Yeah, I think uh, Sir Chandelier or Sh- Sir Chandelier Eberin, is he? Is he have white? Is he green white? Isn't he? I believe he's green white of four seven or something like yeah, that. He's yeah, he's absolutely huge on the defense. He's impossible to kill <laughs> with a four seven. And then um, what's the marauding guy? I forget his name. Tursen Van Ursus or something like that. Yeah, actually, I've got I've got a snapshot of these guys here. Yeah, Torsten Von Ursus. He's a five five for three colors, a white and double green. So he's double green and white, six to throw down, but a five five. And um, Sir Chandelier of Eberon is a four seven green, white, and four. So mm-hmm. so neither of these cost double white. Um, Jedit does and he's not in this deck wisely so um interesting he's playing red green and lady of the mountain is a five five for a red green and four so he could have run lady of the mountain two to squeeze in six um i think stang would be good in this build too well stang was not a common um oh it wasn't yeah uh, some of them are reprinted some of them weren't yeah You're right you're right, though. Yeah, I'm just picturing the white border. Not all the ones that got white borders were common. You're right. Yeah, so Stang was one of the ones that was um, a little too powerful, I think, for them to reprint as a common. But these guys were made comments, I think, with Magic Online. So, yeah, interesting that um, the big 5-5 five, five red-green uh, Lady of the Mountain's not in here. Um, Sisters of the Flame. That's an interesting card because... It's one of the other mana accelerators in addition to Elves of Deep Shadow and Felwar Stone. Felwar Stone is yes. in here, but Elves of Deep Shadow, I don't see them. I think in a deck that's not running black and is running red, the Sisters of the Flame, this is such a slow format, probably better to have. Mm-hmm. Um, the two toughness just by itself makes a big difference. And um, you don't want to make black and be hurting yourself if you don't need black. You can just make red like this. I agree with that, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, this is a it's a sleek build. It's spread it's spread wide, but he's got a, a nice like end game where I feel like my deck just continues to play one ones. <laughs> yeah. <We'll see. laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and you know all the usual suspects in red green. Um, the Pixies are in here, which kind of surprised me because they're just not that tough on the defense. And Mistress Factory is not a common uh, it reprinted uh, as a common. So um, the 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 two one that weak defense it's vulnerable to um, you know like in white the the archers the, the evident archers it's vulnerable to desert. It's, it's vulnerable to any other 1-1, one, one. so I'm kind of surprised. A lot, a lot of folks did not run Argothian Pixies for that reason. Um, I do like the Cat Warriors, though, the 2-1 Forest Walk. Yeah, Forest Walk. Anything with a walk is good. Same reason I'm running the Evil Eye and the uh, Lost Soul. That was the same thought I had was yeah. anything with a walk. And I think the Pixies are a good paranoid play. So building and going into it not knowing what your opponents are going to do, that's a card that can run away with a game. Because your opponent just plays artifact creatures too. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's not. I guess run away with the game's an exaggeration, but it, c- it can be quite helpful against stuff like uh, even like a clay statue or something like that. Yeah, and I wish I wish it flew. Yeah, right. Just, well, and that's that's that's, that's, that's where general. the that's where the flying carpet comes in. Um, mm-hmm. That flying carpet, man, it, it's been eroded so. It says, um, the old version says, uh, let's see, it says that if you, you know, it's cost four to cast a flying carpet, uh, you know, in the original printing in Raven Knights, it was a mono artifact, you pay two, and it gives one creature flying ability until the end of turn, and then the second sentence, which w- w- John and I were, you know, checking on this, it's been eroded and changed, um, They've removed this second sentence in the errata, and they've reprinted yeah, the creature it. Yeah, no longer dies. I think it was a ninth edition or eighth edition. It got a rules update when they overhauled the whole game in one of the core sets. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. is great. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. That card was shaky at best. I mean, it's still just okay. 
but um, it was a bummer to open as a rare when they reprinted it. Personally, <laughs> I didn't love it, but right. Um, I I've always played it in formats where we're playing the old fashioned rules or whatever, or just a homebrew cube or something. And um, looking at it from the context of playing with it with the errata is kind of fresh to me because I never actually played with it outside of just a sealed draft whenever it came out. Um, all right. Yeah, it's a, it's a good card. I think it's underrated in this. Um, Man, I thought especially... that was Mark. I thought that was Mark joining. It's Peter. <laughs> Peter. Peter. <laughs> Peter was going to join the Twitch stream, but apparently okay. he doesn't have a Twitch account, so he's joining the whereby. Peter, you got us all excited. We thought you were Mark. Oh well. <laughs> Sorry. Canadians are all the same, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have to just mute myself. I'm just coughing and like can't breathe properly, guys. <laughs> uh, we were just talking about the decks here, uh, uh, Peter, while we're waiting for Mark. Okay, so yeah, so that flying carpet, um, it can turn any of your big legends or green creatures, any ground creatures, into a flyer. It's only a one of, but it's only two to activate. So once you get it down. If they can't get rid of it, it's another way to get your damage through, um, like the Landwalkers. And uh, if we go back to Mark's deck, um, he's got so he's got Desert Nomads for Desert Walking, which is great. He's got Mountain Yeti with Mountain Walk. He's also got the Goblins of the Flarg with Mountain Walk. So this is a really uh, interesting strategy. And then he's got the Cat Warriors with Forest Walk. So he's got four Landwalkers. Um, and being able to just get past your opponent's big legends and big creatures and defense by walk, land walking them or flying over is pretty strong. Yeah, that desert walking's cool, too. I don't know if that card would make the cut in my build, at least the way I had it. Um, but um, it, it's definitely it's worth considering over some of the little garbage guys that I've got. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go ahead and say that <laughs> confidently. Yeah. Uh, and then he's running some enchant creatures too. He's got unstable mutation, spirit link in the white for that could be offense or defense. Uh, the mm -hmm. giant strength, which I thought that card was really great and ran it in my red green deck. And then immolation, which I think anyone that's running red is, is running that card. Yeah. Immolation is quietly, I think a top five it's uh, or maybe not so quietly. It's um, it's a good one. Cause it kills my favorite thing to do is put it on an egg. It doesn't quite kill the egg, but you can swing for damage. So yeah. it's kind of a damned if you do damned, if you don't sort of deal. Uh, yes. We saw Luke Sherry do that in one of his matches earlier and it was really good. You, you get in for two. Meanwhile, they're, they're taking it and eventually they have to give in and they, and then you get the four, four. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, it's uh, they put that tabernacle down in front of you and, if we look at the red, um, so one of the things that we've been doing is we've done a poll um, uh, that's on the Facebook group, and I think lots of folks have voted in it, And because we've had the request to do, can we do Four Horsemen Popper again, but, but you know, axe the singleton and just go with Popper, and, um, you know, we had thought about doing singleton originally, our, our player Ian had suggested this, and a lot of people have really liked it, but What's been a big concern since day one is John Eckleberry and I, who's on with us here, did a lot of deck testing. You know, we probably played 30 games or so of just, you know, messing around, trying different stuff. And we found that Red was, you know, just going to crush it. And I think you and I have exchanged some chats. Um, why don't you yep. share your thoughts on, you know, if we do Four Horsemen Popper, no Singleton, and you can have 4X of, do you, number one, do you think that Red will be a problem? And number two, do you think we should do Restrictions? Uh, yes and yes. Um, I, I say that boldly. Uh, I think red's going to be a big problem. It really doesn't. Um, it doesn't really allow any other colors to play. The, again, I'm not going to claim to be an expert looking at the card pool. I don't have the reps that you guys do on these. But having played with the cards and just sitting down and crunching the numbers, you get four fissures, you get four pyrotechnics, which... Pyrotechnic specifically is the card advantage card in a format. That's the one you hold it back. You make a 4-4 flyer and you kill a little guy on the other side on a bad day. Or you completely wipe the board on a good day. Yeah. Um, Fissure, self-explanatory. And then the other best cards are still red. Uh, obviously four eggs. Um, but then you look at cards like um, 
the Yeti. It's great value for what it is. It's big enough. I mean, there just aren't big beefy cards like that in other colors. So maybe a little splash of blue in there, but I think that we'd see very little variation. Um, and this is just my personal opinion. If it were up to me, um, I would say it would be very difficult to do this without a heavy moderation um, in red. I think that considering to remove pyrotechnics uh, to zero might take some of the fun out, but limiting it to one. Um, maybe do like a vintage restriction on cards across the format. Um, so you can run four. If it's restricted, you get a total of one. Um, and hitting most of the red cards, because mm. uh, you take red out of the picture, there's so little removal. I don't think Boomerang counts as removal. Uh, Flood might be the best removal card when it comes to advantage, but um, you get Obliette, I guess. Uh, you play Life. Uh, lifelink right or whatever maybe i guess you can count that as a neutralizing card but really you shouldn't be playing it like that um i think there's just very limited options um i mean even immolation's red like all the all the good cards are red um they play well in singleton um because they need support but if uh if we stack them all up together i think that we'd see very very few decks that weren't just red i think it would be a surprised to see anyone that's not running red do well. I think I'd be running four evil eyes of worms by gore smiling and going 04 probably. Yeah. Uh, but that's just my style. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think Mark is joining. So I'm going to switch over to the whereby share and let him in. There we go. All right. There we go. Oh. Hi, Mark. Hey, Mark. Oh. Oh. Mark, are you ready to play some some magic? <laughs> Let's give her and see what happens. You can you can for, for for a few moments you can cast your cares away to the shores of your imagination and throw down some cardboard crack and forget about all the difficulties oh, yeah. of life. Right. <laughs> yes, it's a it's a short fix, but a good fix. All right. Okay. Well, we've just done a deck tech. We've covered your deck. We've covered Mike's deck. Um, we're ready to rock and roll. If you are. And we're, yeah, li we're live on the Twitch stream and recording, so um, we, we're just ready to get going. When I look through my, my, my picture that I posted of the, the deck, I go, and, and I listen to your content, I go, the hell? I, I thought to myself, I swear I put aside uh, another planes or two to put in that deck. I go, I can't find them. I didn't, I didn't, and I, and I finished the deck photo, and I'm like, I don't have an extra one that I was playing. So I'm like, I guess it's just the the one that I was looking for. I'm like, oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, we were <laughs> wondering about that. Like that. Yeah, we were all wondering. We're like, how the hell is he gonna play this white shit? <laughs> I got as much of the chance of drawing the card that needs white as I do drawing one plane. I guess. So. Yeah, I mean, we did notice uh, that everything in your deck only costs one white, and there's only like four cards. So, you know, I, I should have at least put two. I couldn't find the second. I thought I put more. I couldn't find the second one. I was like, you know what? Well, I, 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 I think we're definitely going to do another Four Horsemen Popper event of some kind. So um, if you're ready to roll and get started, we, we can get started, and you'll always, you'll have another chance to build a, another deck later when we get into the yeah. next tournament. Yeah. One that makes more sense. I'm all about that. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, all right, Mark, you can just go middle on tops just fine. I don't I don't mind about cuts. Okay. And, and good luck to both of you gentlemen. Thanks for hosting. Yeah, no problem. Yes. Glad to be here. Okay, let me just check my phone here. Oh, same, Mike. Yep. Sure. All right, you want to do high roll or uh, evens odds? Because we're on camera, I say high roll like we're sitting across from each other. You want to call evens or odds? Uh, we'll go. Uh, we'll go odds. Sure. Uh, it's a six. Ah. <laughs> That's all yours, then. All righty. Well, with how bad my pile is, I don't know if drawing or going is good, but I'll choose go. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to take the first uh, first kick at the can. Right, right. All righty, good luck. Okay, you too then, Mike. I'll keep my hand.
Yes, I'll keep as well. All right. I'm going to go there. I'll lead us off with a desert and say go. Ooh. Okay. Got an island. I'll play a flood. All right. And pass. Sure. I'll throw down a mountain and I will say go. Forest. Mm-hmm. Play a wolf. Sure thing. And uh, pass turn. All right. All right. I'll throw on an island here. We'll go one, two, three, and I will go with an orcish mechanics and pass. Uh huh. Okay. Island looks like got a bite out of it. Oh, this is one of my favorite islands. It's so bad. Um, I've had it since Ooh. I was like a little kid. It's uh, <laughs> I blue bordered it when I was like in elementary school because I thought I was cool. I did it to all my islands, and this is the only one that survived. But. I did that to a bunch of planes. I'm like, oh, I'm going to make black planes. So we got the old Sharpie out and made black like, wooden planes. That looks so cool. It's beautiful. <laughs> All right. I got snippets of the last 30 years of my life in my cards. It's kind of sad and kind of poetic at the same time. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it is very poetic. Uh, so let's see here. We're going to. Uh, let's see here. We're going to play Mountain. And we are, let's see here, we're going to go, say, tell me one, we're going to go, swing in with the wolf. No, no boy, I'll take one. Okay. At uh, end of turn, we're going to go. Gonna play a gypsy. Sure thing. And pass. How oh, is the power and toughness on that? Can you remind me, please? It's a one one. One one. Yep. And it taps for minus two, minus zero, right? That's right, Cost yeah. One and a green to do that. Yeah, that's right. One color and a green and tap. Got it. I'll put down a second island and uh go one, two, three, four. And we'll go a primal clay, and I will make it a uh, two-two flyer. Okay. And I will pass after that. Okay. Let's see here.
going to... Play a Drake. Yeah. And I will pass turn. Sure thing. Big tone, mm -hmm. and I will pass after that. You may go. In with the uh, Drake. Uh, no block. Bump him with the wolf. Sure thing. Uh, at the end of turn. Tome as well. All right, it's a book fight, and uh, I will pass. Sure. Can I ask how many cards you have in hand? I have two in hand. Two in hand. I uh, will go ahead and tap. Uh, we'll go with a. Island and a mountain. We're going to main phase this book to see what I can draw. Uh, this card will be uh, Walking Dead. Okay. Uh, land for turn will be another mountain. Okay. Wall of Spears. And you've got, is that a forest? I'm sorry about the glare. Is that a green up that you got? That is a, that is a forest. forest. Yes. yes. I'll pass. Go ahead. Green him. There we go. It might be a little bit easier there. Just trying to make sure I catch my lands that, uh, yeah, I think that's a bit easier there. Perfect. 
We can't tap him there. Let's look. Swing him with the drake. No block. Tap him with the wolf. Sure thing. I've got a 13. 13, and I'm going to... Uh, in turn, we're going to... Tap three. And play the ocean soldier. Sure thing. And I will uh, pass. The uh, wall of swords or wall of spears, that's it's an artifact creature, but it's still a wall, right? So, yes, still a wall. So, it's, it can't attack. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and uh. We'll draw a card with a tone. And I will discard Stone Throwing Devils. I will go one, two, three. Uh, for a bone flute. And I will pass you. Okay. Hey guys, can you share your life totals real quick? Mike, you're at 13? Uh, 13 for me, uh, 20 for Mark. 20, okay, 13, 20. All right, thanks. I will use the flood to tap down your wall there. Sure thing. Let's see here. Let's see, we're going to uh, keep that and that. I will. Tone? Sure thing. I'm going to drop a discard a mountain. Okay. I'm going to swing in with the Drake. Um, 
you have one in hand, right? Or two? Uh, I do. One. One. Um, before combat, I'm going to... Sacrifice this bone flute. Um, I'm going to knock off your gypsies. Okay. I don't know if that was the right play. I probably should have hit the wolf, but whatever. <laughs> yep. yep, hit the gypsies first. You see All where right. I'm going. All right, no block on the uh, drake. Give me a little pumperoo. Yeah, I'll take my extra one. Go to ten. Okay. And I pass. Sure. Well, that changes everything. There's a swamp. There's a oubliette. We'll target that big drake. Okay. I uh, will cross for two in the air myself. Okay. Um, I will pay one, two, three mana. A fire drake, and I will uh, pass to you. Go ahead. It's got me at uh, that's fifteen. That's eighteen. I guess you at eighteen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Play my my one planes. Oh, I came across. <laughs> That's your achievement there, yeah. That's my achievement. Oh yeah. Sure thing. Discard a mountain. to pass turn. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, move to combat. Okay. Go ahead and activate the fire drake. Uh, swing for a total of four in the air. Taking that four. Two, three, four. Got you 14, right? That would be correct. All right. Post combat, I will use my other red mana and I will play uh, Goblin Digging Team. Uh huh. Just in case. And you may go. Okay. that time to look at your deck list we even talked about it and i don't remember if goblin digging team even matters right now so <laughs> we can look back at this video and i should be like oh, i should have thrown that to the tone but <laughs> the paranoid play here yep you, you know when, when push comes to shove you gotta hedge your bets and mm -hmm. hope uh, let's see Four and five. Play pyrotechnics. That's a card. Targets. I'm gonna be your two flyers. I will responsibly um, throw two damage. Turn. Just the one enhanced so Yes. So, cards in hand there, Mike? Uh, just one. Just the one? Okay. One. Oh, going for the white first. <laughs> Torsten Von Ersis. There he is. 
Man himself. Four four, right? Or something like that. Five five. Five five. Even worse. Cool. In all his glory. And uh I am going to pass term. Sure thing. I'll go ahead and activate my tome here. I will tap a Oh, man, what can I draw? Let's tap a red and a blue. Draw a card. And discard a card. It will be a swamp. Yeah. Uh, we'll go one, two, three, and a red. And I'm going to play an egg. Thank you, Tome, for that egg. Um mm. I will pass to you. Go ahead. Two green, activate the tome. Mm -hmm. Scar an island. Cards. I am going to. I'm pass turn. Yeah. Sure thing. Move to combat. I will swing with the egg. Sorry, move to combat. Okay. Well, your egg is a your egg is a zero three, right? Correct. 
currently a zero three. Currently a zero three. Yeah, we'll tap down your egg. I will, uh, I'll pass turn after that. Go ahead. Okay. Two green, tap the tome. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Look at that is covered here. And discard. Forest. Sure thing. Um, let's see. So, got him on board. Save that. Two. Holy crap. What do you have there, Mike? You're at uh, 10? 10 life, yes. I'm going to pass turn. Damn it. Sure. Tap us. 
swamp in the island, uh, director. Tap down the egg again. You still have one in hand, right? Uh, I have, uh, I now have uh, three in hand. Three in hand. Okay, yeah, you didn't play anything last turn. What am I saying? Um, mm -hmm. Three in hand. I just got to go for it. Um, I will fissure my egg at the end of the turn. Now, does, is that when you fissure your your egg and your egg comes into play? Is that uh, cons, is that cons, is is that uh, that token considered something that's is that something that's summoned? Is it like um, a, it can't be countered? No, um, it enters play as an effect from this card here. So if you were to play a counter spell, it wouldn't work. Um, if you were to play a card like boomerang. It would go away forever. Play from game entirely. I can't do it anyhow, so. Okay, no, it'll uh, resolve there, Mike. I'll be done after that. Go ahead. Yeah, just, just so you know, guys, the the official text on Rook Egg now says, when Rook Egg dies, create a 4-4 four, four red bird creature token with flying at the beginning of the next end step. Okay. Works for me? But yes, that's right. You can get rid of the Rook token by boomerang it because it's it's not a card that would go back to the player's hand. So that's that, right. is, that yep. is one way to get rid of it. It is a red, red bird creature token, so anything that affects red cards can affect it. Okay, so we're going to draw a card. Um, Island. So we are going to and I am gonna boomerang that token. It is boomerang. Good, yeah, looking at my blue, I realized after all that talking like I don't have any blues anyhow. <laughs> all that uh, planning for very little. Let's see here. Sir Chandelar. Sure thing. Enters the field. 
And <clears throat> I am going to pass turn. Tooth Warbeard. Old Bark Tooth. Old Bark Tooth. And I uh, will pass to you. Go ahead. What's the stats on Bark Tooth there? Uh, he is a 6 5 with no other abilities. Yes. I should say, I should mention that the old Chandler there, he's a 4 7 vanilla as well. Yes, yes. They bounce off each other very nicely. Yes, they do. Yeah, they counterbalance. <laughs> I always like the art on Bark Tooth. I wish he was better. Yeah, his art is. Uh, he's got he's got the same kind of art as Sir Chandler. Is he uh, is he an ants uh, and Andy Rot? Uh, Rusu, yeah. And Andy Rusu, yeah, yeah. Another island. We are going to let's see here. Uh, we're going to tap down old Bark Tooth. So, uh, so sorry, Bark Tooth is a six five. Six five. Six five. I'm gonna disenchant that wall. you with the orc. And that, that damage can be directed to, to creature and uh, player? Yes, any target. Any target. It's your planeswalker too if you had one. Hey Mark, um, just so you know, uh, you can't you can't gain the life on that though because um, the artifact gets oh, yeah, sacrificed. There is no life gain if it's out of play. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you'll just That's take. Fine. You'll just I, take... I wasn't quite sure, but I figured that might be the case. Yeah. So basically, in response, Mike triggers his mechanics and sacks the That's artifact. Right. So the, yep. the the target disappears. That's the target disappears before the life game. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um. So let's see here. Okay. Uh, so we are. Or him. 
vigilante, so there's a potential four, nine, ten on the board there. I will take it, and we'll go to the next game. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was out of gas. I already played my fissure. I didn't have any answers for those big guys. Top deck and flood. Be yeah, about man. it. <laughs> okay, so. One of these days, I'm going to learn not to put all my eggs in one basket. No pun intended there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but the thing is, like a four-four flyer. I mean, that's, oh, yeah. that's the card you want. If you can, if you can play that, you want to have that on the board, right? It's uh, yeah. Fisher's a bad card to blow on it, though. I mean, I had to in the moment. Yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty, but there's, is, there's, uh, there's better ways to better ways to deal with it. But hard to swing it through that flood too. That was yeah. a good game. I was I was kind of getting to the to a certain I'm going okay I, I I don't have the right number I'm, I'm figuring out my head I'm going yeah I'm I'm like one man short for something or one card short I'm trying to get that uh, the the advantage there and, and until I got the just the right amount of cards on there I'm, like, ah, I'm looking at all the numbers going it's not doable this turn it's gonna be one of these turns right right I was hoping you'd, you'd attack into my first strike with the desert, and that would be a big old trade there, but you were playing around that. Yep. Yeah, that second legend, though, I just can't beat that. What part of Canada are you from, Mark? Uh, I live in Ontario. I'm uh, in London, which is halfway between uh, Windsor and Toronto in southwestern Ontario. Okay, okay. I do a lot of fishing out that way. Um, I guess mm -hmm. north, uh, northeast of Toronto, really. It's up. Uh, it's a place called Mud Turtle Lake. A close friend of mine has a little cabin up there. We've been going up there since we were little kids. Northeast of Toronto. So you are you going up the away from the from Lake Ontario? Yes. Um, Peterborough area, or is it? Yes, Peterborough, right there. Yep. Uh, Havelock's the little city. Peterborough. Oh, yeah, Havelock. Yep. Yeah. It's nice yep. up there. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. We love it. <laughs> and where are you located, Mike? I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Ah, Cleveland, Ohio. So, uh, about a about an eight hour drive from Peterborough. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you'd, you'd probably swing around uh, the Buffalo way, right, and come. Uh, yes. Buffalo, Fort Erie. Yep, right across the Peace Bridge there. That's usually the hardest part. Sometimes yeah. going through Toronto is like bad traffic, but if you just take the QEW, kind of take that little, uh, yeah. I don't know, there's like two different ways you can go. You can either go the slow way or you pay a little bit bigger toll when you just get there. It's yeah, worth the money. <laughs> good thing they put those toll highways in because it's, it's atrocious. Getting around getting around Toronto on the toll highways is a, it's a godsend. So. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, Mark, could you do us a favor? We couldn't see you shuffling the deck. Can you shuffle it on the camera? You were shuffling Sorry, off yeah. camera. I was, I was looking at the deck while it was... Uh... Yeah, um, and if you could try and keep your your hands within view of the camera, because when you pull back, we we can't see what's going on. 
um, just for fair play. Yeah. Just try to keep your hands shuffling and things like that within the camera view so we can see what's going on. Pre do, yes. Okay, appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right. When you're ready, you can just cut. You're good. We'll go centers again there, Mike. That's fine. All right. And I will take the play again, please. We got lands and spells. Um, we'll try it. Ooh, yes. yes, we can give this a give this a go. Alrighty, let's do it. Good luck, and uh, start us off with a swamp, and I'll say go. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go island for a flying man. Flying man. All right, I'd like to see that more than a flood. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'll pass. I'll go the second swamp and a Felwar stone, and you may go. Okay. A forest. Mm hmm. Swing for one. Nineteen. Okay, and last turn. I'll play a third swamp. <laughs> um, You're giving him away last game. <laughs> yeah, right. Gosh. And we'll go uh, one, two, three. Uh, we'll go with the book. See if we can turn some of these other swamps into something else. Something else, yeah. Know. Well, there's my one planes again. Look at that. Uh -huh. Lucky me. Uh, we will. For the one, eighteen, and end of turn. The old soldier on the board. Sure thing. And I'll pass. All right. I'll tap two swamps in the book. I will discard a swamp. More swamps. Right. I'll play an island now. There we go. Swampy. Still, red swords would be sick, but that's fine. Uh, we'll go one, two, three for my own soldier, and I'll pass to you. Three in hand. There we go. Yeah, we'll go with the Okay. Draw myself a mountain. Cool. Yeah. Um, so let's... Uh, let's have a look here where I'm going to go. We're going to swing in with the uh, flying man. Seventeen. Oh, blood lost him. Uh, yeah, he's a lot bigger. I'll take uh, four more, right? That's four more, yeah. 
two, three, four puts me to 13. Okay, and I uh, pass turn. The blue black artifact deck. Right. I wish I had more you, artifacts. Not quite how you designed it, I don't think, Mike. I'm, I'm not mad about it. I've seen a worse <laughs> hand. Oh, yeah. At least I have lands. That's sort of my biggest thing with this format, is there's no like fixing. We've got the best one right here. Yeah, I'm not even going to use it this turn, though. I'm going to play my favorite card in the format, and we're just going to ride it. Evil Eye. Uh... Um, and I'll pass. The old Evil Eye. He's a, what, he's 3-6, is he? 3-6. He cannot block be wall. blocked except by walls, and I can't attack with anything except eyes That's as a right. creature. So, so yeah, basically, the eye is, is it. <laughs> That's it. Forest. Yes. Um, uh, I'm going to hit you with Flying Man. No block. No For the 12. And turn. The old mossy monster. Moss monster is a thing. All right. I would say we go eye for an eye, but he's not an eye, so. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'm here all week, okay? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> all good. Okay. That's turn. Moss monster. All right. Playing island. Uh, I will tap two swamps for my uh, tome. See what it yeah. finds me. Don't hate that. Um, I will discard. Feel like this is a safe bet. Goblin is a digging team. Ah. Um, you said that last game as well, didn't you? <laughs> Yeah, he was a waste of time last game, the Goblin Digging Team was. Um, I'm going to tap my Felwar Stone for red. Thank you to your mountain over there. Um, yeah. I'm going to immolate my eye. And swing for five. He can't be blocked except by walls. Oh, that's right. That is right. What was I thinking? I said I was putting both feet on the gas. This is the high <laughs> deck now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. Um, you're right. Uh, and I have no walls. So five it is. Sure thing. And I <laughs> will pass. After that, I've got two in hand. I really like the immolation on the evil eye. That's pretty hot. I'd say this is a lifetime achievement for me. I don't think I've ever done this before. And no matter how this game ends, I will talk about it later. <laughs> oh, you already. Okay. I'm 
I'm loving yeah. playing with these obscure cards, by the way. This is great. Yeah, they are. Uh, they're pretty cool. Let's see what can I do. As much as I love just tapping power and throwing stuff across the table like that, this is just as fun for me. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Can't block them. We'll go all in here as well. The Moss Monster is a 3 6, right? 3 6, yeah. Uh, throw the soldier in front of the Moss Monster, and I'll take two from the other. Go to 10. Uh, and end the turn. I will. Let's see here. Two tap. One, two. Laying down at a board dirtwood boar. Uh, I will try to remove the soul from the boars. Yeah. You've done so. Okay. All right. I'll go ahead and tap two swamps for the tome again. <clears throat> I will discard an island. Okay. Uh, swing for five again with the uh, evil eye. Yep. Ten all. Ten all. And uh, post combat, I will I'm gonna tap one island. And one swamp for this piddly little Zephyr Falcon. Zephyr Falcon. The old Zephyr Falcon. Oh, yeah. And I'll be done after that. Go ahead. Got the team vigilance here. Yeah. Yep. Pretty. Hmm. That's be good. Um. Shoot. What? Since I'm probably going out, let's go.
Let's unstable this moss monster. He's pretty big. He becomes a uh, six nine for now. Yes. Uh, so it's got three tokens on there for now. Plus three. Um. Okay. Uh, why not? That's blind man. Old soldier. A uh, big block on the moss monster with the Zephyr Falcon. Okay. Uh, soldier blocks the soldier. Yeah. Uh, one over the top puts me to nine. And uh, last turn. Sure. I think I'm dead. <laughs> this evil eye. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and swing for five. Yeah. He's seeing red with his immolation. Yes, he is. Oh, wait. Uh, Post combat, I will. <sighs> What the hell am I thinking? Tap four, I guess, because I need to read the mana cost of this card. Um, try for a Drake and pass. <sighs> Man. This was really silly on my part. Me any time, but doubt it. So that is two. That is a five eight. something. Perfect. I don't know if that's a... I'm going to try and flash flood. Can I flash flood that immolation? Is that a permanent? Uh, it is a permanent. Well, there we go. It's a bit too little too late. Because I'm at uh, five. It's a Drake. Much. Let's see. Damn it. Yeah, we'll go all. I will block. Um, we'll go ahead and throw this in front of the flying man. Uh, we'll go ahead and block the moss monster with the soldier. And I'll take one from your soldier, going to eight. Okay. And uh, I think I'm dead this turn. Yeah, just cross for five. Yep. All right. All right, Evil Eye. We'll chalk it up. Yes. 
got a little tally mark on there. If I had a pen, I'd <laughs> give him one. The notch in the bedpost. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, he's got to do it again now. Yeah. We'll see. Yep. Take a, uh, a quick bathroom break there, Mike. I'll be right back. Sure thing. So Cleveland, the home of the Cavs, the home of the Browns, home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, home of the Drew Carey Show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame would be pretty cool. I've never been there. I've always wanted to go. It's not my favorite. Um, I'm a, I don't know, I like music. Um, I went once and it was very much, uh, it was a good experience. I would say everyone should do it once, but it wasn't a very revisitable museum in my opinion. No, like I think kind of a I, one I, and I done. Think you've seen it. I mean, they have a couple of like, some rotating, uh, displays depending on the year and who's going in and whatever, but they're static displays, right? I'm just, is there anything interactive? I'm assuming there's an interactive part of it. Like, yeah, I mean, it's been probably 15 years since I've been there, but, um, it's, uh, it's a good time. Uh, it's. It's got a little bit for everybody. Um, I'm much more of like a, I, I guess the rock and roll is not a genre of music that I listen to as much as more like some more alternative, louder, growly stuff for the most part. Um, yeah. So it makes me a little sad that the representation for the bands that I like aren't there, but <laughs> it's fine. It's a great time. Like I said, I, I recommend everybody do it once. Such as? Which bands are you... Uh... So um, I really uh, alternative metal. I'm big on like the uh, like the doom metal scene. Oh, oh uh, yeah, bands like Swallow the Sun. Okay. Um, uh, Insomnium's a favorite of mine. Those are yeah. a little more down the middle. A lot of people have heard of them. Also, I like just more alternative rock than like the uh, as I like to call it, uh, garage rock. Which is nice to have in the background if you're working in a garage. But if I'm sitting yeah. there and running or something, I like something a little bit more heavy. Yep. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm very much a. Uh, I mean, I, I. I've got a lot of classic rock albums. I'm a, I'm a vinyl record collector too, so I. Okay. I collect a lot of the classic rock stuff, but my. Uh, my big stuff is the uh, is the classic metal, the hard rock. Um, 
mostly British punk stuff, but a little bit of uh, American. Um, uh, you know, stuff like the, the classic metal, like Priests and the Maidens. and. Oh, for sure, yeah. You can't go wrong with that. <laughs> um, my favorite band of all time is Motorhead, so... Uh, okay. Uh, I like it, and that, that is always the band that's uh, accepted by both punkers and uh, metalheads, so... Mm-hmm. Just because of the speed. Nice gap to bridge. The old speed that we play at, and... Uh, fortunately, no longer around. Or, uh... Or Lemmy finally succumbed to his lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, right. Some of those guys have been living for so long, it's crazy to me. I mean, even, like, the guys that look at, like, the Rolling Stones, those guys have all got to be in their 70s yeah, eight, now. Late 70s to 80s. Like, freaking... Yeah. Jesus, like, you still want to be doing the same thing? <laughs> right, let alone, I mean, I don't even know if they know they're, <laughs> you do drugs yeah. for that long, I don't know, I, I can't speak from experience, but I can't imagine how those guys are feeling every day, or if they're feeling at all. I don't, yeah. Well, I, you I, go, I, middle on top's fine. I definitely know that Keith, Keith Richards is pickled to death, so, uh, <laughs> wild turkey and, uh, and Marlboro cigarettes will do that to you. Right. All right, I assume you're on the play? Uh, yes, I'll take the play. All right, good luck. Thank you, Mike. Upside down. Scrap this hand, Mike. Uh, I as well. It's not very good. It's pretty terrible. Middle on top, fine. Middle on top, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's do the same sort of call here. Yep, middle on top is good, Mike. All right, let's go to six, see how it goes. Seven and discard one, right? Uh, seven and then one on the bottom of the yeah, library. Yeah. Okay. Ready when you are? Uh, yeah, one to the bottom, and I'm good to go, too. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Oh. Mountain? 
Mm-hmm. Ape. Whoa. All right, that's a big start. And pass turn. All right. I will go with a mountain with no ape, and you may go. <laughs> Play in the forest. Mm -hmm. Swing in. Get you for two. Eighteen. Okay. And pass turn. And I will say go. I'm gonna unstable. Sure. So he is a, he's got three on him, so he is a f two, three, he is a five, six currently. Yikes. And I will swing in for five. Puts me to 13 already. It's quick. And pass turn. Play a goblin digging team and pass. Four five right now. Planes again. All right, that's a lucky planes. Uh, let's see here. Looking at. Uh, let's see here. We're going to. I'm also going to spare Lincoln. You make this real hard for me. Okay. Swing for. Oh, uh, jump. Yep. So we Got still have 24. Yep, it's 24, yeah. And pass turn. Soldier to save the day here for me, hopefully stem some of this bleeding, and I'll pass. Come 
44. Crumble your soldier. Uh, yep. Uh, what does casting cost four? Uh, three. Three, so I'm up to 27. He is six, one plus two, two, three, so three, four. I'm also going to emulate him. Three, four, right now. So now he's a. Uh, he's good. Swing in for five, two, right? Five, two. Going in for five. Plus made it eight. Plus you two. Thirty uh, two. Thirty two. I uh, passed her. Raiders. Okay. And you may go. So he was a, I want to say he's a 5 2, but his unstable comes off, so he's a 4 1 now, I think. Yes. Your Erg Raiders is what, a 2-3? Two, 2-3. Three? Two, three. Actually, the unstable stays on, and the counters are permanent. Yeah. The counters are permanent. The, yeah. It, like, negates itself at this point, though, yeah. That's what I think he said. Yeah, he's going to eventually work himself down to, to... He's got one turn left. Yeah, and then he's... He does still have the counters on it. So, for some reason, the unstable oh, does yeah. get removed. The counters do stay, but... Um, yeah, yeah, I think we were saying the same thing, just four, different ways. Yeah, he's a four, so he's a four-one. That, that, those are three counters that come up, but he's going negative now, so he's four-one. Um, four-one. I'll swing with him. He's going to die anyhow. Yeah, we'll trade him. Okay. So he dies. I still gain four, so I'm up to thirty-six. Thirty-six. Uh, in the turn, I think you can only gain as much life as damage is dealt as the creature could absorb. Is it? No. No. No, he'll get it all. He'll take it all. I thought. It was yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm sick. Sorry to interrupt. That's all right. No, if it had trample, it would be different. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. So two and. Well, I guess it wouldn't be different because it'd be hitting me. Um, yeah. Two and. But... <laughs> Yeah, he'll gain all the life with it, unfortunately. As much as I want that to be true, I, I believe that we're doing it correctly. Oh, I think sure. I just confuse it with drain life, to be honest. Yep. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> you know, drain life, that's yep. all the same cards. Yeah. I got to remember that we're using modern rules here, too. I, all these other old formats, I'll play the... Uh, well, they've all got their own things, but as long as the card's not from Alpha, I won't get confused. <laughs> I passed there. Uh, All right, is that a ghost ship? That is a ghost ship. All right. Just keep coming here. I'm trying to hit four lands. You got a ghost ship. Um, yikes. Eight life. Eight Play a bird maiden, and I'll pass. Oh, good old bird maiden.
nomads. Sure. And... So I'm going to go ship. Uh, block with the birds. Okay. Pass turn. Sure. You're going to make quick work of me here. Play a flood and I'll pass. for four. Uh, it puts me to four. Okay. Is that it for the four? Sorry, Ed. Sorry, Mike. I, I took the four. I just, your camera like flickered for a second. Oh, on my oh, yeah. I don't know oh, what that's your past turn, Mike, yes. Oh, past turn. Yeah, Got it. Sorry. Okay, okay. Sorry. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, try to flood your nomads. I will destroy it rather than returning it. Okay. And I got one turn. I'll pass after that. Go ahead. Okay. Two for two. Plus me to two. Is Torsten von Ursus. And I pass. Sure. Good game. You got it. Stuck on three lands. Can't do anything. Okay. Had this nice looking wall of vapor like way long ago. I'm like, oh, I just got to hit one more land. But <laughs> nope. It's all good. Would have stopped that lifelink. But I don't know how I deal 36 damage with an eye of worms by gore anyway. So. That was in the bag a while ago. That arm was, was killer in that second match. It's like it's it's so tough because I mean even even in other formats, when you think about it, you go, well, how many people play walls anyhow? Right, right. It you know, was, I needed to. Uh, I needed not to run into flood. If you play flood against it, like it was it was the tack. That's why I said at the time I said I got to put both feet on the gas here because as soon as you start tapping it, it doesn't allow me to attack with anything else. So I'm essentially out of the game unless I can use my little uh, pork guy to throw two damage over the head. Yep. Count you down that way, but not easy. All right. Well, good games. Uh, thanks for meeting up tonight. Um, yes. Good luck in the rest of them. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mike. All righty. We'll see you around. Thanks, guys, for uh, recording, commentating, doing all the stuff on the side that you're doing. Sure, guys. All right, everybody have a great Thank night. You. All right, good night. Thanks for that, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good Please. And welcome to the four horsemen.